Hey everybody, this is Justin here, here to give you um, a semi-comprehensive guide to Akihabara, the mecca for otaku culture um, here in Tokyo. So um, I'm going to show you some of my favorite spots, uh, what to check out, and pretty much how to navigate the area. So first I'm going to show you um, the main thing you're going to see when you first show up to Akihabara, and that is of course Akihabara Station, or specifically JR Akihabara Station. Okay, so as you can see over there, there's one of the trains. That's the Keihin Tohoku line. And um, going that, uh, that way, um, that's to the direction where the final destination is Omiya, which is in Saitama. And going that way, the uh, final destinations uh, tend to be um, Ofuna, which is um, in K uh, Kanagawa. So um, you should be careful of where your final destination is when you're boarding the train. So yes, um, here is JR Akihabara Station, and this is specifically um, the north side, uh, the Denkigai um, exit. So from here, um, this is the UDX building, and if you've seen some anime such as 16-bit um, generation, um, this is pretty much um, one of the places you'll see featured in Akihabara. And um, yeah, so I'm going to take you to the south side. Okay, and here is the south exit of the Denkigai um, exit. And um, once you uh, get out of this exit, you'll see this building right here called the uh, Raijo Kai Kai. Can you recognize this building? Um, so in case you've never, in case you've played the original um, Steinsgate games or seen the anime, then this particular building is pretty much prevalent um, in that respective anime. And for all we know on that rooftop, we could be seeing a um, invisible time machine. So yeah, and um, yeah, it's like, um, I don't wanna like be of disturbance to other people right now, which is why I'm really here early. Um, so, and before it gets crowded, I wanna take care of this video. So this is pretty much an electronic outlet store. Um, it's been here for a long time. Um, this looks like it's called a Denkano outlet, but before that it was a Yamada Denki, which is a chain of um, electronic, re uh, electronic stores. And um, down this way, this will take you to Chiodori uh, or Main Street. Um, but we'll go back to this later. So yes, um, in addition to the uh, JR uh, lines, which specifically consist of the Kei Toku lines, the Yamanote lines, and the Sobu lines, I want to show you another train line that you can take. Okay, so if you're coming from the, um, the south side of the Denkigai station, um, you could take this uh, pathway to another line called the Tsukuba Express. So here we have um, a New Day's convenience store, but unlike a lot of other convenience stores which are open 24 hours, this doesn't open till 6.40. And uh, here there, you have um, a lot of places where uh, you can see some shops. So uh, for example, if you need to go to the ATM, here's the Mizuho Bank. But usually the post office ATMs and the 7-Eleven ATMs tend to be uh, compatible with non-Japanese cards. Uh, here's the official Karakawa booth. Uh, here you have some figures on display uh, from Bunny Garden. Not too familiar with this. Uh, here you have some Sonic merchandise, uh, Phantom Breaker. And this is from, this character's from Angel Beats. I haven't really followed that in a long time. And here you have Rem from, uh, and Emilia from ReZero, um, Rizero Kara Hajimeru um, Isekai Seikatsu, and they're in traditional Chinese clothing. And this is from Toradora. And um, I know what it is, but I just don't remember if I saw it or not. Okay, and upon um, exiting uh, that particular alley, um, here is the Showa Dori exit. And um, the, JR ver the JR station Showa Dori exit is just right there. And um, here you can um, take, this is the Scuba Express line, which takes you all the way to Scuba in Ibaraki Prefecture. Um, just to give you an idea where Scuba is or what it is, it's just a college city and it's really known for, um, you know, Scuba University. And Scuba University is famous for its baseball teams and its judo team. And, um, and one in its judo team, Shinya Aoki, a successful MMA fighter, was um, an accomplished uh, judo um, athlete for that team. And here you have a hotel here, and you have a hotel here, and I mean, if you miss home, there's a Denny's right there. So, um, what else can you see on this side of the state of um, Akihabara Station, especially the Shoadori exit? 
And first I'll show you the um, JR um, Akihabara station, uh, Showa Dori exit. So you have this monitor right here. Yeah, pretty neat, huh? And here you have these billboards filled with mobile games and anime. And um, here's another entrance to the Scuba Express. Okay, and this place right here, this is um, the Yorobashi Camera. And it's a chain of electronic stores throughout Japan. Um, there's also a big one outside Osaka Station. And uh, if you're looking for the Japanese version of, let's say, uh, Circuit City or Best Buy, but way, 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 way better, uh, this is the place to check out. Um, yeah, so um, I'll stop by here later and give you um, a tour of this place. And I'll do my best to uh, show you places that will allow me to um, film video. And I'll try to be uh, a least disturbance as much as possible and not be a bother to anyone. And here just across the street, past these taxis, you got a McDonald's and you got a 7-Eleven. Um, aisles of toys. So um, we have, let's say, give or take almost a four foot um, toy of a stormtrooper. And uh, yeah, let's check out what kind of toys you can get here. And oh, here we got some Dragon Ball shirts. So you have one of Goku's with the Kame, uh, one of Yamcha with the symbol for Raku. And here's this one of Goku's back turning Super Saiyan. Uh, Goku and Gohan doing the double Kamehameha and Cell. Uh, a shirt of the Kame House. <laughs> and you have one in Majin Bay. And on average, they are usually 3,190 yen, but um, they don't have anything my size. <laughs> and here we have a Crayon Shinshan shirt, which my daughter has gotten into lately. And here you have a Naruto shirt with the uh, symbol for the um, village, uh, Hidden Leaf Village, with the lot of the bandanas. Cards, or some gambling games, or board games. Othello, I enjoy that. And here are some... What kind of cards are these? Are these just playing cards? Okay, so they're just playing cards, but mostly featuring Vegeta. And these have some of the famous lines. Yeah, so this upper left one here says, um, Maru des Cho sup, uh, sai, or Supa Saiichi no uh, Bargain Seru Dana. It's like, it's as if there's a um, bargain sale for Super Saiyans. Okay, and uh, here on the bottom left, so Sen Toryoku, Nanasen, Hasen, Bakana. It's like his power level, 7,000, 8,000, impossible. Oh, and the uh, bottom right right here, Nani, what? Okay, so let's see what the Frieza one's got. Okay, so the upper left is Watashi no Sen Toryoku wa Goju Sanman desu. So my power level is 530,000. Okay, and this one on the right says, uh, Ryo teo um, skawanai de um, oite ya, uh, yaryo doda. It's like, okay, I'll fight you with both hands tied behind my back. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. They're using lines from the actual um, anime uh, for this particular, for these card sets. And they're about a, a thousand and seventy yen. So like less than $10 at the current exchange rate. And here we have some Uno cards. Um, we have some Uno cards with DBZ. Um, we have one with Boku no Hero Academia, uh, Naruto Shippuden, um, Haikyuu, um, Tonari no Totoro, and um, Spy Family, and Toy Story, and Pokemon. So yes, um, I wonder what the reverse Uno card is. And here are some, some of the Pokemon toys. You can buy all the Pokemon. You can catch them all here, as they used to say. Gotta get you more. Household appliances, cosmetics, and more. We also handle tax free items at Yorobashi Camera. When you shop, backpacks, Optimus Prime, till all are one.
Okay, here we got some Godzilla. So if you're a Godzilla fan, uh, this is one place to check out. And here are some Godzilla plush toys. And here you have Hamtaro uh, dressed as Godzilla. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, my uh, niece, she was really into Hamtaro back in the day. I never saw, I see, lived to see this kind of collaboration. So this is the stuff for Transformers 1, which I would love to see. Uh, I was really big into Transformers in my youth, and I still love it, but I don't really intensively collect it as much. But I have a cousin back home who really loves Transformers, and um, every once in a while, he sends me a lot of money to buy some, you know, Japanese exclusive toys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is sweet. Oh, hell yeah. Sound blaster, I mean, um, just blaster and sound uh, shockwave. Oh yeah. Okay, so they should be on sale now. Oh man, this is pretty awesome. Oh, we got Zoids. So we got some Zoid stuff here. I'm surprised how long Zoids has been around. Uh, it's been around since the 80s. And, uh, I uh, first learned about that because I found a game for, for the original Famicom system. And here we have this um, almost 90,000 yen um, Optimus Prime figure. And we got this um, Grimlock figure here. That's about 219,980 yen. Um, but plus, but it's like, um, but if you include tax, it's another 21,998. Oh man, look at, at this motherfucking Megatron here. Um, I don't see a price tag for it. That's true. Oh, okay. And this Grimlock, this is actually the English. This one speaks English. <laughs> and this Bumblebee, this costs 50, nearly 60,000 yen. But man, this Megatron. This looks fucking awesome. Okay, so here's some of the Marvel stuff. Oh yeah, we'll start from here, now that I just discovered it. So, um, here are pretty much like the minifigures of Wolverine and Dark Phoenix. Uh, you got Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Spidey. Here you kind of got the bobbleheads. And, um, oh, you got this version of Jessica Drew from Across the Spider-Verse. Here is a Matt Murdock figure from No Way Home. Uh, this is pretty interesting. And here you got, you know, mob bobblehead-like figures of uh, various Marvel characters. And um, here are some Japanese editions of some Marvel comics. And on this side, we just got a lot of Star Wars figures. So based on the old school Kenner ones, um, you have Luke Skywalker. Uh, Jedi Academy. I just wish it came with a Grogu figure to bring us back. Here you have Admiral Thawne. Uh, next you have Count Dooku. Um, here you have uh, Hera, which you can't really see that. But also you got um, the other cool figures uh, from me. Uh, many to Com Toy, like the Stormtrooper. C-3PO. Um, Captain Phasma. Boba Fett. Uh, Bo-Katan. Uh, Ahsoka and um, various other uh, characters from the Disney Plus shows and so on. Oh yeah, rest in peace, um, Ray Stevenson. Sucks that you died. And here we have um, Ezra. <laughs> from... oh, the... oh man, a young Anakin Skywalker uh, played by that little boy. Uh, I forgot his name at the top of my head. Uh, Jake Lloyd, that was, that was that kid's name. And here you got the young Obi-Wan. And here you got the young Luke. And here you got. So, yeah, here's some other Marvel figures here. Um, here you got Miles Morales. You got um, this Peter Parker. Uh, you got Captain America from Winter Soldier. You got Thanos from the uh, movies. The X Factor Cyclops. Loki. Uh, Phoenix, 
Here you have some Eternals figures. Star-Lord and Rocket Raccoon, Captain Marvel, and a whole bunch of other characters. Here you got some Studio Ghibli stuff. And here you have a life-size display of Buzz Lightyear. Another bicycle. And here you have a life-size Iron Man. And um, Darth Vader and all of his Imperial Stormtroopers. Makes you feel like there's actually, you know, a bunch of them there. <laughs> Okay, so here's the video game section. So this is largely the PlayStation section. And um, here we got a full-size uh, display of Dragon Ball uh, Sparking Zero. Looks pretty neat, huh? And here we got uh, Metaphor. I've yet to play both games. And here you can just buy some merchandise. No idea what this game is. No idea what this is. But I know who Sonic is. Knuckles, Amy and Dr. Robotnik or Eggman. <laughs> and here you got some Sonic and Tails and Amy plush toys. And here you kind of got some classic Final Fantasy. And here you got some Dragon Quest. Yeah, I know the Dragon Quest uh, 3 remake is coming out soon. And so is um, Yuga Go to a Gaiden Pirates in Hawaii. Um, coming out February 28th, so I'll be sure to here. More Dragon Quest. Tales of Grace's Remastered. Sorry, I don't know it. So, uh, PS4 um, and PS5 controller alarm clocks. Oh, here you got some Resident Evil Roblox figures. And um, this is pretty much the extent of the Xbox section uh, here in this Yodobashi camera. Xbox has never really taken off in Japan, and for most places, this is the most you're going to get out of an Xbox section. Eligible products can be offered at tax-free prices. Uh, okay. If you have any Controllers are fucking expensive. Oh yeah, check out these um, figures right here for Street Fighter. You got Bison, Yu, Fei Long, Dalsin, Ken, and Chen Li. You know, all doing their moves. And here you got Evil Ryu, and you got the signs of Fudin Kanzan um, from the stage. That's pretty neat. Are on the oh, this is a really cool Sonic figure. Cameras, you got the Mega Man stuff here. And are on oh, you got a Mega Man t-shirt. Audio equipment is on the fourth floor. Some more neat case stuff. Um, I just saw the advertisement for outside, but I have really no idea what the game is. I don't do PC gaming. I don't do mobile gaming, which is why I don't know it that well. Alright, PS5. Check it in. New Tekken Blossom. Dragon Quest 10 Online. Um, well, I really don't know shit about modern gaming. <laughs> but I do know Persona 3. Um, this is the remake. Prince of Persia. Romancing Saga. The PSVR 2. <laughs> Pretty much almost costs as much as the uh, fucking PS5 Pro. And here are some arcade controllers. Yeah, I don't think I could ever play with a controller like this. It just really kind of seems troublesome. I know they do it in some tournaments, but, um, you know, that's just not me. And, dear God, these controllers. Um, nearly, um, you know, 12,000 yen for a controller. That's like pretty much almost um, a little bit more than the games that you're buying. And the games tend to average between 7,000 to 8,000 yen for the PS5. And I'm like, yeah, paying nearly 12,000 yen for, uh, for a fucking controller. Uh, fuck that shit. And uh, PS5s, they're now about... Um, you know, 73,000 yen, and this one costs about, the slim costs about uh, nearly 80,000 yen. And um, the PS5 Pro, it's gonna cost nearly 120,000 yen. So yeah, fuck that shit. Um, 
you know, that's just too excessive for me. And here you can buy some, you know, really nice PC setups, some really nice PC chairs. Monitors. And here's some magazines. Oh, here's the latest new type uh, with Rama one half. Um, I'm enjoying that series right now, but I still love the original. And um, here are some games such as Nintendo Switch Sports, Fit Boxing with um, Hatsune Miku, Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Violet, um, Animal Crossing, um, Mario and Luigi RPG, um, Brothership, Brothership, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and Breath of the Wild. I still have yet to get a Switch. I've been meaning to get one, but I just keep forgetting and life gets in the way. Oh uh, yes, the, Neo, the arcade Neo Geo selection, volumes 1 and 2. Uh, yeah. Beyblade. Freedom Wars. Donkey Kong Returns. Passenger Z. And the Famicom um, Tante Club. And Kama Itachi no Yoru Triple. Um, yeah. Art never includes all three games, which is like really a third one. And here are pretty much like, you know, the digital um, copies. Amiibos. Mostly some Zelda ones. <laughs> Riku from um, Sora from um, Kingdom Hearts. Ness from Mother. And the duck and the dog from Duck Hunt. <laughs> I, uh, I think I've seen it all. Kirby Toys! <laughs> All the Mario toys you can think of. And here you have um, that character from Apple Seed. Oh, this is Pet Labor. I'm sorry, this is Pet Labor. For some reason, I was thinking of um, that character from Apple Seed. <laughs> Pretty close on vests and all that. Got some Zoids. Here you have a Rockman Zero figure. <laughs> you got Robocop um, from Robocop 3 with a flying jetpack. Here you got ED209. And pretty much this is all um, Hideaki Ano stuff like Shin Godzilla, Eva, um, Eva Unit 1, Shin Kamen Rider, and Shin Ultraman. And here's this really neat figure of Hatsune Miku. And uh, here are the three machines for Magic Knight Ray Earth. Yeah, these boxes are kind of in the way right now. Oh yeah, and you can, here's the box for all three of them. And it costs 14229 And if you need tools for your modeling um, or for coloring or painting, um, this is, they pretty much have a section dedicated to all of this. So I think that's pretty neat for the hobby enthusiast. Man, this is awesome. Oh yeah, this is the mech that um, is used in Macross 7. Yeah, and if anything puts the camera in Yodobashi camera, it's definitely this section. So um, you can buy all kinds of lenses, um, 
Yeah, so uh, check this out. And this is about um, 134,000 yen. This is about, and this is not the camera, this is the lens. Um, this is about 377,110 yen. And here are some cameras that you can buy. Need a So if you're looking to get a good quality camera, professional grade, this is the place to go to. And for video cameras, uh, you got some stuff right here. So this is kind of one thing you might be able to use. Other regular cameras, uh, camera or phone mounts, and uh, for GoPros, uh, you can pretty much if you're riding a motorcycle, you can put it on your um, one of your mirrors. You can put one on your wrist. Uh, you can put one on your helmet, and um, you can put one on the back of your motorcycle. So if you're a GoPro guy. And you're looking to use it for all sorts of purposes, uh, that might help. Yeah, GoPro is something you need to look into. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel on here, but you know, just want to study, um, you know, uh, what, what it's going to be. And um, once you go back inside this alley from the uh, Showa uh, Dory exit, here you got this convenience store called Lawson. Uh, unlike that other um, uh, convenience store just down the street, this is open 24 hours. And um, new days tend to be mostly focused within station areas, while Lawson's, um, along with Family Mart and 7-Eleven, are all over the place. And um, yeah, as for Lawson, in case you didn't know, it actually started out in Ohio. And also within this alley, um, there are some souvenir shops. So um, you usually, it's, this one's called Satellite, and usually they'll have special themed stuff. Like for example, when the new Ghostbusters movie came out, uh, they were selling Ghostbusters shirts. And for this particular theme, they see, okay, it's called Machikado, and it seems they're selling all this stuff right here um, for this particular season. And it seems that um, this particular season has five days left. Yeah, I know it's closed right now, but also within this alley is the Square Enix Cafe. And um, the cafe is open from 9, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., with the last order being from um, 8.30 p.m. Takeout is from 11 to 8.30, and you can buy the merchandise is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So, yeah, uh, as I said before, I'm just doing this because, um, you know, I don't want to film while it gets too crowded. And um, here are some of the merchandise that you can get. Yeah, you got a Chocobo doll, a slime, um, some of the, car the main cast from Kingdom Hearts, more Chocobos, and other slime merchandise from Dragon Quest. So yeah, if you're in this area, and if you're a Square Enix fan, uh, this is the place to check out. So yeah, from now, um, I'm gonna walk over from here uh, to the main street and give you an idea of what you can see there. Oh yes, and I'd also like to mention, um, in this part of Akihabara Station, and if you have too much stuff, you are free to use these lockers. Um, I'm guessing not many of them actually use coins anymore, but instead you use the Suica cards, um, which is sort of like the train passes. But, oh, it looks like you can use coins here. So yeah, you put coins here, you're assigned a locker, and then, you know, put whatever it is in there. So yeah, these are pretty convenient. Okay, so some are 500 yen. And um, this is 600 yen, 800 yen. So yeah, if you've got some big stuff, use the 800 yen. Yeah, and they're in operation for 24 hours. Okay, so now I am back outside the uh, south exit of the Denki Guy um, station, uh, part of the station. So, um, you know, we could get another look around. So here we have um, a Jonathan's, which is like a chain of, um, you know, family restaurants. And I'm pretty sure if you've seen Initial D, um, especially I think fourth or fifth stage, um, Takumi has a date with his girlfriend at this restaurant, but instead of called Jonathan's, it's called Johnny's. And here we have a Namco arcade. And I think a few years ago, this was a um, Sega arcade. 
And here we have the famous maid cafes. Um, yeah, for maid cafes, um, I'll explain those soon. So um, also I just want to explain here is Atre. Um, this is also um, a chain of department stores within station, train stations. And usually um, at this section, this window will always have anime characters on display or AKB48. And um, I specifically do not know what anime this is. Okay, so Kinshi, uh, Laibu Kinshi. Yeah, that just kind of means like, you know, no live performances, like no dancing, no doing songs and stuff like that. Oh, okay, so um, here's the name of this place. Um, Resu Tori, Res Tori Ana no um, Atelier. So Atelier uh, Res Lariana. Okay, I have no idea what that is. Okay, it looks like it's some sort of um, cinematic um, ranking um, alchemy RPG and it's for um, PC and uh, mobile games. Okay, so not the kind of platforms I play on. And here we are at uh, Chuodori. And that green bridge right there, that's where the uh, Sobu line runs. And that's the yellow train. So if you wanna, let's say, oh, there's the Sobu line right now. So if you're hoping to, let's say, go to Chiba or wanting to go to um, Mitaka or Nakano or Shinjuku, that line is the best um, one to use. Okay, and one of the cool things about, you know, this part of Tokyo and as Japan as a whole, there's a lot of 24-hour restaurants. And one of those 24-hour restaurants here is uh, Fuji Soba. And this is actually featured in Sega's uh, Yakuza or Ryuga Gotoku or like a Dragon Games. Um, so, it's, um, so pretty much here's um, a display of what you can get and the prices. So, yeah, here's some pretty cool stuff. Mostly udon and soba, tempura, and this is where you do your ordering. Um, but um, instead of mostly cash, um, you can use your Suica or your Pasmo uh, to order here. And it looks like this particular machine um, does take cash along with Suica. And they got other stuff on display here. Yeah, they all look good, but I'm not going to be having my breakfast here today. Okay, and as you can see here, uh, we have the maid cafes. Um, I don't want to film videos of, let's say, the maids um, outside on the streets right here, um, trying to tell customers in. Um, I want to be respectful to those individuals who are working um, as best as I can, so I'll do my explanation here. So maid cafes in Japan, uh, or specifically in Akihabara, have largely been a thing since 2000, and... Um, they're pretty much one, now one of the main attractions uh, to this very uh, district. And um, a lot of people, especially those of, who are not familiar with Japan or its culture, um, have a really strong misconception of them. Uh, some people think they're very sexual in nature or like they're very um, suggestive in nature when they're really not like that at all. Uh, I have usually I go to a maid cafe, like let's say, um, I don't know, like once or twice a year. And they're pretty much, you know, really fun places. They're very energetic and they really try to welcome you and, you know, make you feel comfortable and welcome as much as possible. And um, pretty much how this started was there was this game called Welcome to the Pia Carrot. Um, it was pretty, that game I think was also featured in 16 Bit Sensation. And uh, pretty much that game is like featured around restaurants and maids and waitresses. And um, at the time, doing um, themed cafes or themed restaurants was a thing in Tokyo back then. And uh, they did one based on Welcome to the Pia Carrot. And because of that, it inspired uh, the maid cafes. So yeah, and back in the old days when they were pretty much small businesses, instead of um, chains now like uh, Maid Dreaming, uh, or my dreaming, however you want to pronounce it. Um, like, they were very small businesses. They were much more chill. There was no idle performances like you see today. And back then, like, you know, if you want to, let's say, win a free drink, you could, like, say, play them in a the game of Super uh, Mario Kart, either on the Super Famicom or the Nintendo 64. And if you beat them, um, you know, you get a free drink. Unfortunately, they don't do that these days because um, now they're pretty much under um, ownership. But in addition to maid cafes, there are also other themed cafes, which I will um, show later. And as to why this um, particular part of um, Akihabara is called Denkigai or Electric Town, um, as you can see um, behind me, um, I'm just right next to the maid cafe that I was uh, filming at earlier. 
Um, this used to be a place where you could buy household appliances um, after World War II, uh, most notably uh, washing machines, dryers, uh, fans, and so on, refrigerators, and so on. And as time went on, um, especially at the dawn of the uh, computer age, um, this also became the place to buy your computers. And then when games were being introduced throughout the 80s and 90s, that also included, you know, anime inspired uh, games for um, people to enjoy on their computers. And from there, that's where the otaku culture um, creeped its way into this part um, of Akihabara. And then it just expanded from there. And not only could you just apply by appliances, like if you want to build your own ham radio, for example, you could buy um, components um, at this very um, section of Akihabara. Or if you want to say build a ham radio or build, you know, walkie talkie, if you remember those things, um, this is the place to do it. And even to this day, you can still come to this section of Akihabara and, um, you know, buy your own components for whatever it is that you want to build. Okay, so pretty much um, here is the main street from, um, let's say, okay, here's, um, if you walk from, let's say, the north e exit of the Denki Gai Gucci, um, you just walk here, and you're pretty much also here as well. So on this side, you have this um, drugstore, um, Welsia, or Wel, um, Wel, yeah, Welsia, I don't know how to pronounce it. And here you have a sushi shop called uh, Sushi Ro. So if you want rotator sushi, uh, that's the place. Um, you also have, if you want takoyaki, there's gindako. Uh, if you want, let's say, traditional Japanese food, there's the um, otoya. So um, there's these places too. Okay, and here's pretty much um, an arcade, mostly crane game machines. And um, you have the Gigo arcades, which used to be Sega. So this is Ichigokan, arcade number one. And over there is Sangokan, um, number three. Okay, so um, if you're taking, let's say, the north side of the Dekigai exit, there are lockers uh, just right here as you approach uh, Chuo Dori. So, um, you know, if you prefer these lockers, it's cool. Okay, and um, here's a cafe, Runoaru. Uh, these are a uh, famous cafe chain in Japan. Eh, more 7 Eleven. And um, here I am back at the north exit part of um, Akihabara Station. And there's another uh, billboard for Uma Musume. Okay, and here's the UDX building once again. So um, I'm going to be having breakfast at that place called Gusto on the fourth floor. Um, you know, it's one of my favorite places to have breakfast. It's cheap, it's reasonable, um, and you get, um, you know, a free um, refills on your drinks at this place here. So yes, about this UDX building right here before um, I have my lunch, my breakfast I mean. Yeah, the doors aren't open yet as you can see. Um, this was pretty much the brainchild of Shotaro, um, well I don't forget his first name, Governor Ishihara. Um, I forgot his, I think it was Shintaro, but correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, even though despite his um, stances against otakus in the past, he did recognize that Akihabara um, was a place where a lot of um, software companies at the time um, were located during his administration. And he felt um, having a building uh, dedicated to um, having these um, people in these industries congregate um, was necessary in helping that particular um, you know, part business sector. So um, I, this place actually, I think up until 2001, used to be a park. Uh, it might have been this site or the other side on the Showa Dory exit, but yeah. I remember when I first came here in 01, um, it did have a park, but I, I don't remember which side of the station. And they had a basketball um, park too, but it closed like a little later after I first came here. So yeah, um, I'll show you that building later. Okay, now that I've finished having breakfast, I am now gonna show you other parts of Akihabara. And uh, first, I'll show you the UDX building. And I know I just, you know, gave you a quick glimpse of the uh, Tamachi Nation store uh, just right around, right here. Uh, I'll get back to this later when it opens. So, uh, yeah, I want to be focused on the uh, places and not the people. So I already gave you a brief explanation of the UDX building. So this is sort of like a community center. Um, the, this is used for small conventions, and this has also been used for job fairs. And here is a guide of, you know, uh, of the building itself and what restaurants you can check out. So this has six floors. So basement is parking, 
first floor has a place called Akibaichi, has some restaurants and shops, um, a post office, ATM, um, and uh, a Koban or a police box. Uh, second floor has um, Akibaichi, I guess is the name of the uh, place. And here you have the, the event space called Akiba Square. And um, over there is Akiba Info. And um, here you have the entrance to some of the main offices. And third floor, you have restaurants and shops. Uh, fourth uh, floor, you have the uh, UDX Gallery, the UDX uh, Gallery Next, uh, the UDX Theater, uh, Lee Fork Akihabara, and EXC Field Akiba. Fifth floor is the office lobby. And sixth floor is um, here you have um, the conference rooms, um, and also you have some clinics for internal medicine, oncology, and dental clinic, and the management office. And here's pretty much, you know, the layout. And here's pretty much a guide of where the restaurants are. So here's what you can see on the first floor. And all the yellows is the second floor. And uh, the third floor is um, this more fancy stuff. So here are all the services available to you here in this building. Yeah, you kind of get a nice view here. And these places have changed over the years. Um, so, yeah. Cafe Flying Scotsman, Lab Shokudo. Shokudo meaning like an eating hall. Cafe and Bar, and Coco's Color. I have no idea what this place is. But I remember um, one of these places, like the one, I remember in this building, there used to be an arcade here. And in this building, there used to be a um, American comic book shop. Uh, but that was like years ago. But yeah, a lot of these places have changed um, over the years I've been coming here. And um, out of the 18 of the 24 years that I've been here in Japan, I've been to, coming to Akihabara for about, uh, about 16, 17 years of them. So yes, um, if you're looking for, let's say, um, you know, tourist guide info, uh, this is the place to do it. And here you have um, Astro Boy or Tetsuo and Adam as the mascot of this place. So, um, okay, so closed on every Monday, except when it should be a national holiday. The following weekday is closed. Um, open hours are, for, okay, so Tuesday to Sunday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So it's um, past 8 a.m. right now. And, um, yeah, so yes, um, thankfully, they have services in English here. And it's pretty cool. They got puzzles, uh, puzzle posters of Ray and um, Asuka from Evangelion. And, of course, um, in case you couldn't tell, they do sell souvenirs here. And they also have posters for some other um, uh, events going on. So, for example, um, in... Oh, in Toshima uh, Kuritsu Tokyo Show Manga Museum. Oh, they have from July 20th to November 24th, uh, they have a Capcom versus um, Osamu Tezuka characters uh, kind of exhibit. So yeah, um, you got Pluto here, Astro Boy, um, Jin Sao Tome, uh, Ryu, um, I think this character's from Buddha. Yeah, you got um, a lot of characters both um, you know, a Capcom character is drawing the style of Osamu Tezuka. And here you have something for the um, Osamu Tezuka uh, Museum, Manga Museum. And um, well, where was it? Oh, it's in Hyogo and Takarazuka. Yeah, a little far from where we are. So, yeah. Um, I'll see if I can, I don't want to um, be a disservice to the business, so, which is why I'm doing it um, before business hours, so, um, you know, I kind of want to avoid the crowds and don't want to be a nuisance as much as possible. Okay, so I'm going to go down the escalator, so I think this is an um, important opportunity to share with you guys that when using the escalators in Japan, um, even though there's really no law um, defining this, but this is kind of like more of a culture thing. So if you want to walk, um, you use the right side here, but if you want to stand, use the left side. And in Osaka, it's actually the opposite. So yeah, so whenever you're in Japan, you need to use the escalators, please remember this um, important tip. 
Okay, so if you're here in Akihabara and if you um, face any trouble, so upon coming down the escalators, just turn left here. So, um, okay. Um, you see those red lights right there? That's where um, the police are stationed. So let's say you lost your wallet or something, or um, you lost your backpack. Um, you can come here and report, uh, give, let's say, um, a missing item report to the police. And um, you should, or if you wanna look for some place, um, you can also ask the police for assistance here as well. And in case you need cash and um, you need to use the ATM, usually the 7-Eleven ATMs or the post office ATMs, they will recognize um, international um, debit cards. So if you need cash, here's the place to check it out. And also in case you need to use the ATMs, um, please be sure to inform your banks or your card companies that you'll be uh, traveling overseas. So um, they won't be um, find anything suspicious with such activities. And um, yeah, now as you can see right here, we got some vending machines and vending machines are pretty much almost everywhere in Japan. But um, if you wanna um, get drinks at a cheaper price, um, there are some Don Quixote's or grocery stores just right around the corner where you can probably save 50 yen. So usually if you want, let's say a bottle of Coke, um, they will usually cost 180 yen um, on the vending machines. But if you go to a Don Quixote or a grocery store, you'll probably spend um, 100 yen on uh, there instead. And if you're looking to get some new contacts, uh, this is a place to get some. And though there's already a McDonald's on the um, Showa Dori exit, we have another one here. Okay, so we are now approaching the main street. And um, before um, I showed you from the uh, south side of the um, Denki Gai exit, now we're kind of like a block north of the north exit. So here's pretty much one of the main intersections. Yeah, pretty neat, huh? And here you have the uh, Fuji to um, the Sumitomo uh, Fudo-san Akihabara building. So um, this is pretty much like a real estate company building. And if you've ever played the game Akiba's Trip or seen the anime, um, you might recognize this building. And right here is um, Big Cam uh, Biku Camera. Um, this is also another chain of um, electronic stores like Yodobashi Camera, but this is a little bit smaller. Okay, so um, I'm just going to walk north um, past that intersection. Now, as you can see to my right, uh, there are some uh, capsule toy machines. And let's see what kind of capsule toys we can get. Um, here you can get uh, camping vehicles, um, sauces, sauce bottles and packages, um, ice cream cats uh, based on spaghetti brands. Um, Toys of ice cream, the Shinkansen, uh, Minecraft, Disney watches, um, rings um, that are being endorsed by uh, K-pop bands. So yeah, they pretty much have a capsule toy machine for just about almost everything. Huh, they got one for life, Pokemon, sandwiches and bread, and uh, the slime from Dragon Quest. So yeah, you kind of get a bit of everything here. And this is also um, a place where you can get um, anime figures and t-shirts. Um, so uh, let's see what they got in the display window. Okay, so we got a really nice uh, Bochi the Rock shirt here. Um, we got some Gundam figures. We got some Kamen Rider. Optimus Prime. Uh, oh, this is a really cool uh, button of I for Moshinoko. Uh, cat toys of Naruto. Um, some Figma figures from Kimetsu no Yaiba. And we got some uh, pretty hard to catch. Okay, we got some pretty neat JoJo figures. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really see a price tag for them. And this called is um, Boksu Akebara Kobi uh, Tengoku Ni and their opening hours are uh, 11 to 8 on weekdays, but um, 10 to 8 on weekends and national holidays. And um, the sixth floor events floor is um, closed at 7. So yeah, um, if you're pretty much a hobbyist, this is a place to check out. 
and um, we'll be going through this site a little later. And this is an um, overall um, trade or a hobby shop. So here's like the floor guide. So if you want to um, sell some stuff, um, you go to the basement floor. Um, if you're looking for retro games, um, the first floor just right here. Um, if you're looking for modern games, you go to the second floor. If you wanted figures, you go to the third floor. Uh, fourth figures, mostly tokusatsu and kits. Fourth floor, um, fifth floor, so on. So you, I'm pretty sure you can read yourselves. And here's the layout of the building. And here is an arcade. Um, this arcade is uh, the game Taito Station. And um, here's pretty much um, the floor guide. So basement first floor is the um, print seal room, um, the driving games, and Taiko no Tatsujin. First floor is for prizes, so these are crane games. Second floor, third floor, also crane games. Uh, fourth floor are pretty much your generic arcade games. Um, so, um, Satellito Game. Okay, so games you play via satellite and Danchidego. And fifth floor is uh, music games. You know, for games like DDR and all that stuff. Oh, and here we have Animate. So this is pretty much like a flagship store for anything manga or anime related. And um, Geki Yasu. So if you're looking for, let's say, super cheap DVDs, videos, books and games, um, Lamta, um, Lamtara, um, this is the place to check out. Um, but the store is very, very cramped. Um, so um, if your waist side exceeds 30, good luck going through the aisles. Uh, here is a Pachinko area. It's still closed. And um, here is Don Quixote. Um, right here. So if you've played, let's say, Yuga Gotoku, then you likely know what the store is. And um, to give it a nice comparison, um, it's pretty much the Walmart of Japan. So if you're looking for, let's say, cheap souvenirs, um, cheap t-shirts or whatever, um, anything you can find, um, let's say, at a souvenir shop, you can get cheaper here. Um, let me see. I know the one in, what's it called? Um, in Shinjuku is 24 hours, but I don't know about this one. Yeah, it looks like this is open. Um, oh, this is open 24 hours. <laughs> Didn't know that. But I'll come back here later. Yeah, because I know there is a Don Quixote at the station not too far from my house, but that's open from 9 a.m. to um, 9, 11 p.m. or so. So yeah, some are open 24 hours or some are not. Um, I've been coming here for more than 15 years and I did not know until today that uh, this location is 24 hours. So yeah, once again, there was that building we just went to earlier and this is um, Sukumo. So uh, if you're into esports and you computer parts, uh, this is the place to go to. So um, let's kind of go back down this way. Now, as you can see, there's more capsule toys. And, um, and if you're looking for like a really nice cafe, like a cat cafe, um, you know, you can go to the third floor here. And um, there's also other, um, you know, gimmick cafes like uh, this place right here. So this is kind of like more like an idol cafe. Um, so um, Oshikatsu, so they're not exactly maids. They're kind of more like idols. And here's, a, here's another maid cafe called Plastic Love. Uh, I'm guessing that's a reference to the uh, Maria Takeuchi song that's been a hit on YouTube the last few years. Eh, that's my best guess. But um, anyway, yeah. Uh, guess I'll show you some more stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, so here's the sign of the cafes you can see here. They got a hedgehog one, nice. And you got some dogs and you got some cats. So yeah, you know, as long as you don't have any certain animal allergies, uh, you know, maybe you should check out this place. And here you have another maid cafe, but um, here is one of several Sudogaya stores um, here in Akihabara. And um, they're kind of like um, in select places all over Japan. They're located out of Shizuoka from what I've heard. And um, in this location, um, you can buy uh, Gundam models, uh, robots, military um, replicas, and um, 
car models. So if you're into this stuff, this is the place to check out. Uh, it's on the second and third floor based on this sign here. So yeah, um, I'll be showing you other Sudugayas as I uh, proceed with my walk. And looks like there's this really nice place on the sixth floor to have some meat if you're not vegan or anything like that. Oh, and um, looks like there's um, this idol um, cafe that is um, produced by Ai, Uehara Ai. Uh, she was an adult film star, and she was also featured as one of the um, Kyabakuras in um, Ryuga Gotoku Zero. So, um, yeah, um, maybe this is a place to check out whenever I have time. And in case you ever miss home, we do have a Carl's Jr. here in Japan. And oh, specifically, this is one of three locations I'm aware of. So we have this location here in Akihabara, and I know of one location in Shinbashi, which is a couple of stations away from here um, on the Keihintoku line, and I know of one in Yokosuka. So, and um, if you've seen um, Akiba's trip, the anime version, um, they actually come to this location a lot. And just above this place is a cat cafe. And here's the main uh, sign right here. So if you love cats, uh, here's a place. And here we have another um, game store. Um, not really, a, this used to be a game store, but um, usually this place right, this for, uh, first floor, this is mostly concentrated on uh, figures. And as you can see right here, we have another Sudugaya store. And it also has um, anime goods, figures, and plastic bottles. And if you're ever hungry for more something traditional, um, come to uh, Tendon Tenya. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm allergic to shrimp, so um, I never really come here. Here you got a soba shop, which is nice. Yeah, as like I said, um, it's now getting a little crowded. And if you're looking like for your own personal stamp or honko, um, here's a place to get one. And looks like it's open. And here you can find some Oshinoko stamps, specifically a date stamp and whatnot. And here you can get Jujutsu Kaisen pen. Oh, um, it's a stamp pen. And here you got some Hello Kitty ones. Uh, Royal Host, another family ch restaurant chain. And here you got um, more made cafe signs. Uh, Prism Collection, that's the name. And here's Family Mart, another chain of convenience stores um, all throughout Japan. Okay, and if you're looking for premium Wagyu, um, here's another place to check out. And here's another Liberty store. And um, if you're looking for One Piece, uh, Dragon Ball, and Naruto, um, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer. Is, oh, and they got six stores in Akihabara, nice. And here's um, been one of my favorite shops. And um, throughout the whole time I've been coming to Akihabara, uh, this place has always been in business called uh, Toys Golden Age. And um, yeah, uh, they sell pretty much um, retro toys and new toys and everything in between. And it's been operated by the same owner um, as far as back as I can remember since coming here the first time in 2001. And this is like their window display. So you see you get a mix of um, old and new. Of course, you got Ultraman and Godzilla here. And you got some Oshinoko. I love the toys to that. <laughs> Pop Team Epic. And here you got some characters from Udo Yatsura, Jujutsu Kaisen, um, Ni Tengo Jigen no um, Yuaku or Lady Signing, um, Bochi the Rock. And, oh, there's Pochi right there. I think some president of some South American country loves that character and, like, I think he carries that toy with him. 
And also, if you're an arcade gamer and you're looking for like arcade boards or arcade parts, uh, the 6-4 Mac Japan this is the place for you. You just take the elevator right there and it takes you up. Uh, I've been to this place numerous times. And um, once again, just like that other store from before, if your waist size um, exceeds 30 inches, uh, good luck walking around. And also for more transportation info, um, in addition to Akihabara Station, um, we here we have uh, Suihiro Station, um, which is uh, which runs through the Ginza Line. Um, we have an entrance from this side, and we also have an entrance over here. So if you're looking to let's say um, going to Asakusa, well, the Scuba Express is like two stations away. This is another place that'll take you there, and this will also take you to other places. Um, in Tokyo, such as Toranomon, which is where the U.S. Embassy is located. So yeah, Gein's line that helps too. So yeah, that's it for this side of the block. And beyond that, it's not really Akihabara anymore. So I'll show you this side. Okay, so here we are on the other side of uh, Chuodori. So um, here's a pop-up store by um, Good Smile Company. And um, here we got some figures of Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, here we have uh, Madoka, Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Ghost in the Shell, Evangelion, and we got some Yu-Gi-Oh ones down here. Oh, and we got one of Astro Boy. Uh, cool. So if you're interested in these uh, minifigures, uh, here's the place to come to. And um, so far, the, here are the opening hours. And this is from September 21st to um, October 21st, so four days left. So who knows what will pop up next. Okay, just want to get people out of here as much as possible. Okay, this green sign here, this is a Moss Burger. This is one of Japan's local hamburger chains. Um, if you're looking for hamburgers, um, I personally don't recommend this. Uh, I have bad experiences having the hamburgers here. One is this having me in, uh, in the emergency room. Uh, yeah, so feel good. And if you're looking for like a Japanese equivalent to Kinko's to make some copies, um, here is Axia. Uh, this location is open from 8 from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. But um, if you're looking for a 20 hour, 24 hour location, there is a 24 hour location in Shibuya. And if you need some medicine, um, here's Matsumoto Kiyoshi. Um, I recommend this place. But um, if you're looking like for, let's say, cold medicine, they only limit, let's say, like one cold medicine um, to per customer. The reason for this is because um, because of the Toyoko kids in Kabukicho, um, the teenage runaways, apparently they've been using prescription um, out over the counter drugs, which is why they've been using and for ramen chains, this is one of my personal favorites, um, Tenka Iki Ramen, and um, it's based out of Kyoto, but it has some of the best ramen you could ever have. Yeah, um, of course, it's a figure shop. This place is nice. And if you're looking for basic electronics like phones, tablets, and computers and cameras, uh, Jampada um, is also really nice. So yeah, I think until now I've seen, you probably have seen this sign called Japan Tax-Free Shops. So for tourists, uh, this um, particular policy predates the, you know, the uh, tourism um, during the Abe administration. So um, if you would say purchase at least 5,000 yen worth of merchandise, you could get a tax-free. And um, usually um, if you uh, go through this, I know they put in a special bag and conditionally you can't open until you come back to your home country. Um, I don't know how much how it works because I'm a resident and not a tourist Okay, so Hakata ramen place if you want to know what Hakata is it's in um, Fukuoka. Um, it's pretty good ramen And here are some places right here. I remember a few years ago uh, more like 10 years ago uh, Masaya Matsukaze a seiyu actually did um, a seiyu cafe at this very building and it was actually called the Seiyu Cafe. And um, I went here once and actually met the Japanese voice actor of Rock Lee here. And unfortunately, I didn't get to meet Masaya Matsukaze because if he was working there, I would have got him to autograph me a copy of Shenmue. Yeah, Appa Hotel. This is um, one of Japan's biggest uh, hotel chains. Uh, Saizeria, um, 
one of Japan's biggest um, Italian um, restaurant chains. And if you've seen um, Haruhi Suzumiya, then likely you know what this place is. is. Um, so yeah, if you want. And it's also much cheaper than Gusto the Sunday. Once again, um, another Liberty store. This is also um, features a whole bunch of um, figures. And if you're looking for souvenirs, um, this is one place to come. Uh, they got some really cool bandanas, t-shirts, and so on, mug cups. And if you're looking for retro games, um, this is one place to come to. And uh, once again, the aisles here, if your waist size, uh, waist size is like, you know, 30 and up, good luck getting through the aisles. Okay, so here you have some lots of loose cards of Game Boy Color and uh, Game Boy Advance. Uh, here you guys got some Pokemon, more Pokemon, and the Ochis themselves. Actually, in Japan, they're really the first two games were um, red and green, but blue came out later, and so did yellow. You got some Sailor Moon ones, Card Catcher Sakura, Tiny Toons. A lot of Rockman ones, DBZ, Mickey Mouse, and down here we got some more uh, GBAs. So we got a couple of card capture soccer ones. I didn't even know these games existed. Um, here you got the first, you got Final Fantasy 1 and 2, Tactics, and 4. Uh, here you have the Rockman um, Exe games, or EXE. So I used the pronunciation of Exe. And uh, yeah, uh, the original Donkey Kong Countries. Um, pretty much like the Mario games. And wow, I don't even know where to begin. Yeah. Let's go into the Super Famicom. Chrono Trigger, that, I, this is my second favorite game of all time. Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy V, Final Fantasy IV, and this is Final Fantasy IV Easy Type. I believe this was the game that was um, shipped as Final Fantasy II in the US. Here you have a remake of Dragon Quest I and II, Dragon Quest III. Um, well, all these three games were originally um, Famicom games, but for some reason, Dragon, I think Dragon Quest IV got a PS1 release. But here we got Dragon Quest V, and Dragon Quest VI. And another really cool game by Enix, um, Act Razor. Um, I remember seeing this game on Nick Arcade a lot. It's like a mix of side-scrolling action and SimCity. Yeast 3, Bomberman, Super Metroid, Kirby Ball, and Hoshino Kirby 3. Goemon. I'm surprised they made a lot of these games for the Super Famicom. Oh yes, Tetsuan Adam for uh, the Super Famicom. Uh, I know in other countries it's called Waldi, but Wally, but in the U.S. we call him Waldo. Miracle Girls. <laughs> um, this looks interesting. Area 88, Star Fox, ah, Street Fighter 2, four, zero, Street Fighter Zero 2, Super Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and uh, just a regular Street Fighter 2. Final Fight Guy, Final Fight 2, and Final Fight. But of course, Streets of Rage is the better console beat em up. Um, Castlevania 4, DBZ. One of the best, uh, probably one of my top five favorite games. I don't know how to rank it, Chittles in Time, but I got this half off, or maybe like 2000 in, like, you know, t over 10 years ago. Kunio Kun. Now let's check out the case behind me, which has some really radical stuff. So, Mother 3 for G Game Boy Micro, um, 130,000 yen. <laughs> Here we have um, a card catcher Sakura uh, Game Boy Color. That's pretty neat. Uh, the pocket key, the Game Boy camera, also cool. Um, here we have some other cool stuff like this Ninja Turtles game. Um, I bought all three Game Boy Ninja Turtles games like um, 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, like 
1,500 yen each. Here we got Mother 1 and 2, a Donald Duck game. Oh, Final Fight 1, Silent Hill, Aladdin, Castlevania, Metroid. And here we got some Slam Dunk games. Shin Megami Tensei. And here we got loose carts of Final Fantasy V and Final Fantasy VI. And here are some Famicom games. Super Contra. Contra. Uh, Rockman X2. Oh, wow. Uh, Glory, no idea what this is. But, you know, not enough to pay almost 100,000 yen for. Huh. Uh, Roku Denashi Blues. I have this, I have one for Super Famicom, but I sure as hell did not pay almost 500,000 yen for it. And uh, Dead Fox, uh, no idea what this is. Chippendale 2, I pay like a quarter of this price. Um, Dai Kaiju Deluxe, um, I might have this. <laughs> the Terminator game. Yeah, if you want my thoughts, watch the Angry Video Game Nerds review on it. Um, which became Samurai Pizza Cats. Um, I bought this for like a third of this price years ago. Uh, the Famicom version of Final Fight. Uh, Sweet Home, which is based on a movie. And this was the game that later inspired Resident Evil. Tom and Jerry. I think I paid like a quarter of that price over 15 years ago as well. Layla. Um, I'm not sure if I have that game. Star Wars. So, yeah. Oh, and Soul Brain. And Chippendale, too. I know I paid a quarter of that price years ago. Some more loose cards. Dr. Mario. Mario Open Golf. Double Dragon. Double Dragon 2. Double Dragon 3. Keru Nak uh, Naguru. Battle City. This is the Ninja Gaiden games. Well, there's Ninja Gaiden 1, 2, and 3. But I meant the cover of 3 is pretty cool. Yeah, I know that a lot of the Famicom games, they have a really cool cover art, uh, such as um, Donald Land. And, um, of course, you got Mar the first Mario Brothers game, uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, and uh, technically not 2, but called Super Mario USA in Japan. Yeah, but that's a different story in itself. Ah, uh, Urban Champion. This brings back memories. I'll consider getting this. Saint Seiya, Captain Tsubasa, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Macross, Doraemon, Kinikuman, uh, Castlevania 3. Um, I know this is really cool if you played on the Famicom the twin, twin system. The Twin Famicom. Hino Tori based on the manga. Gradius. Uh, Ninja Turtles. The original Mother game. And yes, there's Afterburner for Famicom. And which in here we have uh, Final Fantasies 1 and 2 as one cartridge. Um, Final Fantasy 2 is its own cartridge. And Final Fantasy 3. And here we have the original Megami um, Tensei game. And here are some box games. So, um, you know, some of my personal favorites such as um, the Queen Special of Fire Pro Wrestling. I need to get the PC Engine version of this. And this is Super Fire Pro Wrestling with Aja Kong on the cover. Monopoly. Kami Tachi no Yoru. Yeah, it's more like a visual novel. 
Ultraman. Cyber Knight. And The Adventures of the Rocketeer. I love this one. I got this one from my brother a few years ago. Mario RPG. And Super Godzilla. <laughs> this looks cool. And these are other loose carts. Hmm. Don't really know much of these games. And here's uh, the N64 games. Uh, GoldenEye. Ah, that's not bad. I tend to see it for double in other places. And yeah, I see it for cheaper for here. Star Fox. Uh, Perfect Dark. Yeah, it says it requires the memory expansion. And it's not bad uh, for 2000, almost 2,500 yen, but it says it has some, you know, some burn on this. Yeah, look at this. And look at uh, this. You can see the quality of the coloring. Uh, Goemon. I know that Akira Toriyama did the opening theme for one of these games. Castlevania, F-Zero. And I like how the store goes out of its way to say, you know, if you want to save the data, you have to have a memory card and it can't save on the cartridge. So I really appreciate the store goes out of its way to give you that distinction. Yeah, so for example, Majora's Mask, you have to have the memory card. Ah, going back to the Super Famicom. So we got Magic Knight Ray Earth. Um, there's also not just Ultraman, but Ultra 7. Uh, Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon R. Sailor Moon S. Sailor Moon Supers. And Sailor Moon, another story, the RPG. Um, probably one of my favorite RPGs for the Super Famicom. And here you have some Yu Yu Hakusho games. Yu Yu Hakusho 1, not bad for the price. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho 2, and Yu Yu Hakusho uh, Tokubetsuhen Special Edition, and Yu Yu Hakusho Final. Oh yeah, in terms of DBZ games for the Super Famicom, my number one recommendation, Hyper Dimension. Okay, here are some Mega Drive games. So um, here's a Wonder Mega. Um, it's almost 60,000 yen. And so here you can play uh, Mega Drive games. And with this, you can play the Mega CD games. And thankfully, the store here, uh, they have a list of like, you know, what's region locked and what is. And here you have Aladdin, um, Advanced Warfare, Afterburner 2, um, Air Diver, Echo the Dolphin, Thunder Pro Wrestling. Shoot on the Long, which is based off a of ma uh, karate manga. Uh, some soccer game. Uh, Fantasy Star 2, right here. Uh, Fast Step 1. Seems like a racing game. And here you have some Mega CD games, or Sega CD. Idoodle, Isle Lord. Dark Wizard. Wonder Dog. And here are some loose cartridges. Okay, Lord Stalker. Langrisser 2. Um, Fantasy Star 2. Fantasy Star 3. Uh, the first Fantasy Star. I know the first one came out on, May, um, what was it? Master System but I never really had one. And um, here's Fatal Fury for um, Mega Drive, and it's 980 yen. And uh, yeah, here's actually the controllers, um, and here are the original Mega Drive consoles. So this is actually the Model 1 unit. And this one costs um, almost 15,000 yen. And for nearly 20,000 yen right here, you could get a 3DO. And here are some game cubes. Usually the Wii's are cheaper, so I recommend getting a Wii if you want to get, um, you know, GameCube games, because Wii's can play GameCubes. 
Super Mario Stadium, uh, Zoids, Sonic Heroes, Sonic Collections, Smash Brothers, Animal Crossing, Naruto. Yeah. So let's see how much this Sonic game costs. Okay, almost 4,000 yen, not bad. Uh, Smash Brothers, a um, little over 5,000 yen. Uh, this Zoids game, um, almost 2,600 yen. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the basis. Oh uh, yes, the Pocket Station. Uh, these were exclusive to Japan. These were pretty much like what the VMUs were to the Dreamcast. So yeah, uh, let's check out the PS1. All right, so you got some uh, Guitar Hero stuff, or Rock Band. Oh uh, yeah, this is Guitar Freaks. Oh uh, yes, Pada Pada Paradise. Ah, oh, shit, I can't bend over. Especially my backpack on. I love this game, I have this at home in the US. Mania 2 X. So this includes uh, Final Fantasies 1 and 2 for the PlayStation, rewarding long ass um, load scenes. So if you remember Busted Move, uh, this was the third game, uh, Dance Summit 2001. And in Japan, even though it's called Busted Groove in the US, it was called Busted Move in Japan. And of course, because of copyright reasons, they had to change the name to the US. So for PlayStation and PlayStation 2. Oh, and they also have these special controllers you can use. Um, I love the first two games, but never got around to playing the third one. Maybe I'll consider buying that in the future. Oh, here we have uh, Cowboy Bebop for the PlayStation 1. Um, it's in pretty good condition. It's about 6,500 yen. And it's the Bandai the Best version. And this is the non-Bandai the Best version. This is another uh, Cowboy Bebop game. So yeah, I think he mostly plays a swordfish. And I really like this cover too, and this is about almost 5,000 yen. Um, I might have bought this game, or might haven't. I buy a lot of shit, um, especially when I was single. And you'd be surprised how many copies of um, Guilty Gear for Dreamcast I have amongst other stuff. Okay, what's this called? Pandora Max Series. I don't know shit about this. Man. Saga Frontier. Yeah, I just wish I had the flexibility to bend over, um, especially with my heavy backpack on. And I would take it off, but there's really no space for my backpack. Ah, Popolo Kroos Monogatari. Uh, this is a really fun game. Less than 1,500 yen. Oh, what's so we got the Game Gears? <laughs> okay, we got Magic Knight Ray Earth, Sonic and Tails, uh, Creon Shinchan, um, got Doraemon, Puyo Puyo, and some Mickey Mouse games. Yeah, I really need to get into Game Gear collecting again. And here we have the PSPs. Um, my fat ass is not going to fit in here, especially with my backpack on. Ah, sweet. Gundam posters. Especially from the movie trilogy. Loose PSP, UMD PS3 games. So yeah, that's just pretty much it for this store. Yeah, as you can tell, this aisle, um, it's pretty much very narrow. And if you have backpacks, um, you got to be really careful here, especially when you want to face the other side. So yeah, um, so yeah, here's like pretty much the Dreamcast section. Um, so uh, pretty much like everything I want for Dreamcast, I've only bought. So uh, yeah, here's the Nadesco game right here. Um, oh, here's the Gundam game again. No, no, this is a different Gundam game. Um, Blood of Zeon. It's more of a strategy game. And here's the game that came out to the U.S. Um, Rise from the Ashes. And it's a pretty good game. Grandia 2, King of Fighters, Sakura Tyson, uh, Sakura Tyson 2. Uh, hell yeah, the Chrono Trigger song. Uh, DDR for Dreamcast. 
uh, Sonic Adventure 1, uh, Shenmue 2, House of the Dead 2, Typing of the Dead, Sucker Wars 3 and 4, uh, Virtual Fighter 3 TV, um, Ma Ken X, this is done by Atlas. Apparently I heard this is um, a Shin Megami Tyson uh, spinoff. And this was actually one of the launch games in Japan. And I mentioned earlier about a game called um, Welcome to the Pia Carrot, which inspired uh, the Maid Cafes. And this is um, one of the installments of that game for Dreamcast. Okay, and according to this, um, this has never been opened. And, you know, in the back, you kind of get an idea what the game is. And here below, we got some Saturn games. Here we have Mobile Suit Gundam, 480 yen, Enemy Heroes, Enemy Zero, um, Guardian Heroes, really great game. And here we have um, Gundam Side Story, uh, Blue Destiny. This was like three games. This is game one. Um, this is game two. And this is game three. And there are some where you can buy um, in all three sets. And pretty much the story is like, you know how they have the Zero system in Gundam Wing? So apparently, um, they, the Universal Century, they have their own version of the Zero system called the Exam System. And that's the basis of this plot. Like the Blue Destiny and the um, mech that the Xeon is using, they're using their own versions of the Exam System. Zeta Gundam. The first Grandia game. Yeah, I would bend down, but like, um, it's too cramped for me to bend down. Hello? Here we got a DDR pad for Dreamcast and um, a pilot stick for um, Dreamcast. And here you can have some Wii consoles, Wii accessories and controllers. Um, here's a Saturn console, um, House of the Dead with the. Um... Oh, okay, this says usually the gig, the game was included, but according to this, um, it's just the gun only, no game included. Pretty much a ripoff for almost seven thousand yen. Um, some AV cables, uh, component cables for, I mean, composite cables for the Saturn and Dreamcast, mostly the Saturn. Um, a one megabit RAM expan um, expansion card, and here's the four megabit one. Here is um, a memory card, and according to this, this is like a power memory. Um, I don't know much about this. Here is a mouse for the Saturn, and here are some controllers. And here is the uh, virtual uh, the mm, stick for like virtual on. Here's the three D controller. Here's an arcade controller. Here's some Neo Geo games. And here's some PS two stuff. Like for example, we got this uh, Fantasy Star. Game. And I'm guessing this is like a remake of the um, original Fantasy Star game. Looks pretty cool. And according to this, this has never been open. Oh, Lucky Star. One of the unknowns I've never been into. Yeah, it's kind of getting a little crowded in here. And pretty much there's a bunch of, um, you know, uh, cheap electronics here. So yeah, um, oh yeah, so this building under construction, this used to be um, a trader, but they moved over there. Um, this location was nice. And this is a relatively new building right here. Um, I have no idea what they're gonna use it for, but in, up until a couple of years ago, um, this building was like an Apple authorized uh, store. It was an Apple store, just a store authorized by Apple, where you could buy, you know, um, MacBooks, iMacs, um, iPhones, iPad, of course, everything Apple. And you can also buy other cool stuff such as um, 
let's say, use DJ equipment, um, you know, keyboards, um, not like, you know, keyboards for a computer, but piano keyboards. Like, um, I could have gotten a Yamaha DX7 here for 10,000 yens a few years ago, but um, I just didn't want to carry with me home on the train. And I regret not buying it. Yeah, uh, okay, this is a safe enough distance to film people. Uh, people are just lining up to go to this pachinko right here. And if you've seen Bill and Ted, then you know what this is. This is a time machine. And if you've seen 16-bit sensation, uh, then you likely recognize uh, this restaurant right here called Mr. Donut. So um, this used to be very prevalent in the U.S., but like many of them were bought up by Dunkin' Donuts. And, um, and I believe that where the main character sat was <laughs> right at the very window. So if you buy some retro PC game and open it up, it might take you back in time. Um, once again, more PC shops if you're looking for PC parts or just, you know, full PCs uh, or anything for um, eSports. This is the place to go to. And um, here is, so it's again, uh, Chuo Dori. So up until a few years ago, um, especially on Sundays, oh, looks like they still do it. Um, the um, pedestrian heaven thing. Yeah, so for a while, the pedestrian heaven was shut down because of an incident where um, a guy took a truck, um, you know, ran through some people and, you know, a tragedy happened and all that other stuff. And it was kind of closed like that for a year. But usually on Sundays, <coughs> they close off this um, road to cars and people are free to walk around this street right here. And especially up until, let's say, um, the end of the 2000s, um, there would be people who would be dancing to, let's say, the Hare Hare Yukai. And apparently, um, even though, as I think I showed you that sign before that says, you know, you can't do live performances. Uh, technically, that was kind of always a thing there, but like it was not really enforced until local businesses and residents were uh, complaining about it. So yeah, so after 2010 or so, um, especially after they closed off the pedestrian heaven, um, they just, um, people, they started enforcing you can't do live performances. Yeah, hopefully in this particular section of, let's say, um, Occupus Trip, hopefully there will be no vampires trying to steal my clothes. This is how high is it? And I have pretty long arms. Okay, um, I'll be showing that street late um, soon. So, uh, but first let's go through here. So if you're looking for uh, games and um, some other cool stuff, then I recommend this place, um, the Akiba um, Cod Cultures uh, Zone. Um, it pretty much has a whole variety of small businesses that you can um, purchase all kinds of goods in. And um, it should be opening around 10. And there's a pawn shop right there, the Daikokuya. And that may, um, red sign says um, made to see. And here's an advertisement for that game we saw at the north exit of the uh, Akiba Station, the Genkigai Station. And if you're looking for some good curry, there's go go curry. And um, a lot of my friends and relatives who ever visit here, they always think that's Harambe, um, that gorilla that um, got shot to death at the Cincinnati Zoo in 2016. But it's not for some reason. Um, it's just a gorilla, random gorilla. And um, if you've recently played, let's say, um, Lost Judgment or um, Yuga or um, Yuga Gotoku 8 or. Um, like a dragon infinite wealth you rec likely recognize this place called uh, Yoshinoya and usually these places are open 24 hours and um, you could have the best um, beef bowls here or yudon in Japanese so um, and it's pretty cheap and for just about you know random stuff I rec uh, Mulan's pretty good and we'll be checking out this place later um, the Sango um, Gigo Arcade and here is a typical souvenir shop, but I recommend Don Quixote for your souvenir shopping. 
Okay, so as I promised, um, I would get back to uh, the Tamashii Nation store, which is a lot of places. This is a place that you get a lot of figures. But this particular real estate has a very uh, unique history. So up until a few years ago, this used to be a Gundam cafe, and then um, a few years before that, it used to be an AKB48 cafe. So um, let's see what this place has to offer now, and who knows what it could be next. So usually um, they um, ship things out every once in a while. So uh, here they got some really unique uh, weapons. You got Bay Play, oh, Sailor Moon. Here you have her moon stick and Sailor Moon herself. Okay, so you have the Master Sword from Zelda. This looks like the sword from Noni Kenshin. I don't recognize this gun. This is Beyblade um, from, what's it called? Uh, Kingdom Hearts, Kimetsu no Yaiba, and this is from Kamen Rider. And here you have this from Jiro for Power Rangers and Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm guessing first they have some Sailor Moon stuff. Oh, you have the um, rocket, the spiral moon rod, the other rod. Here you have the ca uh, chalice, or the holy grail, the cosmic heart, the Kaleido moon scarf, and the tuxedo mirage memorial or ornament. If I remember this correctly, it does play the musical version of uh, Tuxedo Mirage. Yeah, here's some other cool stuff. The Eternal Tiara. Yeah, this is more based on Sailor Moon Cosmos, not the original uh, 92 Sailor Moon anime. It takes more from that design. Yeah, the transformation vibes of um, Uranus and Neptune. Oh, voice sharing sound, so it does have that. Oh, and this is where you can take a picture. Okay, so um, that gun I was talking about earlier, it's from Psychopaths. Um, I haven't really watched it in a while. This is from Jojo. And this is from Guru Nagai. And that time I'll train calling to us. Okay, um, I, I made that mistake on the Master Sword. It's from Fate's Day Night, according to this display, but I don't want to um, get into that. The Squid Game uh, Giant Doll. <laughs> Zaruba from Gato. Ankh from Kamen Rider O's. <laughs> I can't believe you can actually use it as a glove. Okay, so the source from Kamen Rider. Oh, uh, that sword wasn't from Rory Kenshin, it was from Ultraman Z. And here is, um, yeah, oh yeah, the Green Ranger. And the blade from um, Yava. Oh, okay, so that microphone from earlier and that particular uh, rod, um, the, these two mics are actually from Mad Cross Frontier. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of easy to forget when you don't see these things every now and then. The Dragon Radar. <laughs> it's been on sale for a couple weeks now. <laughs> That's sweet. Here you have the swords from Kimetsu no Yaiba. Okay, these are the ones that Tengen uses. This is the one that um, Dengoku uses. This is Giyu's. This is, these are Inosuke's. Uh, this is uh, Zenitsu's. 
this is Muichido's, and this is Tanjiro's. So yeah, you can have some bike rock with these things. And here you can take a picture with uh, uh, Gigi. Okay, this is the start from Bleach. And this is the one from Pretty Mummy. This is display only. And this anime is from Mahono Yose um, Perusha. Um, I'm not really familiar with this particular series. Here you have some of the Sailor Moon figures themselves. Jupiter, Mercury, Sailor Moon, Mars, and Venus. But here you have Chibi Moon, and here you have the minifigures. And here you can buy the actual moon stick for uh, 12,100 yen. Or you can also get this uh, mini dis this, um, display of Sailor Moon um, sitting on a moon. I have a figure similar to this I bought years ago, and I actually kept it on my desk at this job I had at the time in Utsunomiya. And um, I was working at a girls' school at the time, and um, it was pretty fun uh, doing that. Um, you know, having that. Okay, so here is the Dragon Radar. 2,750 Ah, uh, yes, the uh, Sailor Moon Crystal Edition, Crystal Star. It lights up. Ah, here you have um, a figure of um, Reno from, uh, what's it called, uh, Kaiju Hachigo. And um, Undead um, Unluck. Uh, I don't know that anime. Here is some um, Sandland. And here are so those figures on display, which are pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool to have this um, figure of Athena. I actually used to have um, a very similar version to this, but um, after I had my daughter, uh, all the Saint Seiya figures I had back in my parents' house in Arizona, um, I sold them all off. And here you have some DBZ figures. Yeah, these are pretty badass. And most of them run for less than 4,000 yen. Here's some Kimetsu no Yaiba. Yeah, I just love how articulate and detailed these figures are. And here's Bleach. Ah, Hades from Saint Seiya. This one's pretty badass. And the double O Quantum. And Kamen Rider. And uh, the Gundam with the, um, the G armor. Yeah, this was only canon to the TV series. The Godzilla 2000, American 2023 movie, um, you know, doing its atomic breath. Uh, skateboards. Uh, oh yeah, they actually have a figure of Yuto Horigome, um, a skateboarder. But um, I haven't really followed skateboarding since high school. Ultraman, Dragon Ball Daima, Kaiju Kyugo, uh, Momo and um, Okarun, or his real name is, um, what was it, that one actor, Takakura Ken, from Dan Da Dan. Ah, uh, hell yeah, check out this, um, what's it called? This figure, Mecha Godzilla from 19, the 1974 one. And you actually push these buttons to make certain sounds. Okay, that's to his activation sounds, his roar. And this is his super um, space beam. And this is his cross attack beam. So yeah, it's pretty cool it does that. Ah, oh, fuck yeah, check out this figure of Griffith on his white horse. And Guile. Can Guile take down Griffith? <laughs> and uh, here we have uh, Conan in a, uh, skate on a skateboard. And I know this is, um, what was it? Um, 
Shangri-La Frontier. I just haven't gone around to watching that yet. And this is one of the mechs from uh, Macross, um, this is East uh, Macross Plus. And here you have this figure of Guts in the Berserker armor. Um, let me still get a, yeah, the glare. Yeah, this is pretty badass. And this is 10,450 yen. And that fi Griffith figure is about 14,850 yen. And um, here's a uh, figure of that witch, uh, sh uh, Shiruke. I'm not sure what the official English pronunciation is, but I'm going off the pronunciation of the katakana, which is Shiruke. And she's about 8,800 yen. And here you have these other characters. Tekken. Pretty sweet. All right, we got some Gundams here. And uh, also, this is from Macross. Massinger Z. And here you have um, the Strike Freedom Gundam. Really over the top. The Master Sword from Zelda, 22,000 yen. Oshinoko figures. Uh, Gintama. Haikyuu, which I still need to watch. <laughs> and some more Gundams. And some Evas with a docking unit, which I think is pretty neat. Here's some more of those babies. Classic mechs. Into the Spider-Verse. And some other Marvel properties. Kamen Rider and Ultraman. <laughs> Chainsaw Man, Anya, Naruto. Yeah, a lot of Naruto's, Goku's, uh, Tony Chopper, and some Saint Seiya's when their bronze armor is turns golden. And here you have Sailor Moon. Yeah, the figure I was talking about earlier I used to have, I think I you know, have it in my parents' house um, with Sailor Moon sitting on the uh, moon, Crescent Moon. Uh, it's her in her Princess Serenity dress. And my co-workers and my students, they really love that figure I used to have. Classic Gundam. More Kamen Rider. And Ultraman. <laughs> A jungle of forced displacement. Got some cool Star Wars stuff. The Netflix One Piece series um, figures based on the likeliness of those actors, which I think is cool. And um, some more Netflix stuff, like Rebel Moon, which I've yet to watch. And here are the um, Netflix One Piece figures on display. A few Marvel uh, properties. Um, wow, they actually made figures of the Saint Seiya movie nobody gave a shit about. Uh, the Flash from the DCU, Aquaman, and the Michael Keaton Batman. Oh, this is so badass. So yeah, that's it for Tamashi Nations. And um, let's go check out the rest. Okay, so once again, we have another Matsumoto Kiyoshi here as we cross the street. Um, and um, once again, if you need anything, not just, you know, medicine, but sweets or drinks, um, this is the place to get it at a really good price. And um, right here next to the um, Ichigo Kan of um, uh, Gigo Arcade, if you're looking to exchange some money, uh, this vending machine will take care of it for you. So, um, okay, you can exchange, let's say, the uh, yen. Uh, well, let's just see. 
Oh, these are just language support. So they have language support um, for these following languages. Uh, so in Japanese, English, uh, Chinese, Korean, um, Spanish, Portuguese, 24 hours. But for Thai, Vietnamese, French, or T and Tagalog, it's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So yeah, and here are today's rates if you want to exchange at this very machine. Even though, yeah, I think usually they're really just uh, 10 yen off, um, 10 yen less than what the current exchange rate is, but um, yeah, just, you know, so they can get the cap, you know, the transaction fees and all that. So yeah, it's, um, there's plenty of places in Japan, especially Tokyo and Yokohama specifically these days, where you can find machines like this. And um, here are some more um, traditional electronic shops. And um, usually from 10 a.m., there's like a whole bunch of places where you can buy old school electronics, like radio equipment, um, radio components, um, a whole bunch of old school stuff or, um, you know, or building old school stuff. Uh, Katsuya, this is more of, let's say, um, a katsudon or a chicken bowl kind of place, KFC. I think they try to get the kernel in um, Tekken lately. And here, um, this is the Gogol, the Gogol Khan, uh, the fifth building. And as you can see here on the first floor, uh, they got a bunch of um, crane games. And here you got um, another trader too, where you can buy lots of video games, both retro and modern. And here you got some more, um, what's it called? Um, old school electronic shops. Same with this one. And here are a computer parts store, a Wi-Fi parts store. Uh, this is a computer parts store. Um, this is a pretty cool place to get some, you know, parts like RAM and all that. Here's a ramen shop. Another ramen shop. There's another made cafe. More electronics. And more electronics this way. Um, another arcade. <laughs> Electronic billboard. Yeah, I really want to avoid filming people as much as possible, but, you know, I don't want them to focus. Your focus is on the places I'm showing you. Uh, Kotobukiya. This is a really cool shop. Where you can buy, like, the coolest figurines. I wait for you. Oh